All right, what is up, everybody? I am on with my man from the United Kingdom, straight from London, Suli Brakes. Mr. Brakes is a spoken word artist these days, and he's somewhat of a YouTube, I guess, hero phenomenon. I mean, you've got this channel where, um, maybe we'll get you to kind of rhyme off some stuff at the end, but you've got this YouTube channel where you've been able to travel around the world, you've hung out with guys like Will Smith, had breakfast with him, and spent time with these really influential people because of this new path that you've chosen to go on to basically tell your story and and you use poetry to do it now yeah yeah so um what's the name of your channel by the way the youtube channel silly breaks youtube so, forward slash silly breaks all right so we'll throw a link on that um afterwards when i do the uh, post edit on this but let's do your zero to hero story because um you know you're a kid from london um, yeah. United Kingdom. Um, you know, you went through school. You had this pivotal change in your life, and you basically shifted your mind to go in a different direction from what the institutional school system told you to do and to go to. I'll shut up. You know, you talk. You tell me what's uh, you know what's going on and how that all changed for you. Um, I guess a significant moment in that respect was kind of when I when I was when I was going through um, the school system, graduating. I guess a significant moment was my graduation day when um, my my mum actually didn't turn up and for me that was really significant because all this stuff that I'd been pursuing all, all the stuff I'd been doing has been was kind of a, a way to make the, my family or my the people around me happy you know and I, I spent a lot of time trying to facilitate for them and I thought I guess if she if she couldn't turn up to this this situation herself this um, this occasion then I guess it's time for me to fend for myself and see what I want to do to make myself happy you know and then I guess that's when it became the idea of following my passion and the, the passion what I like to do I like to write I like to perform spoken word I like to speak it but initially when I started out just coming off from university having no experience in that, in that entertainment field or that space having no idea of how it works I guess there was a lot of research involved and it started out pretty rocky just just trying to understand how business as a whole works how do I make myself self-sufficient as an artist especially with an art form which is not that popularized as spoken word yeah so I guess another key moment in terms of when I shifted my mentality the first one was kind of an emotional shift a kind of spiritual shift and the, the moment where I kind of shifted my mentality was when I read I read The Alchemist by um, Paolo Coelho and, and for me that and why did that book, pivot uh, yeah, it, it really it really shifted my mentality because it kind of reinforced what I was thinking at the time. And another significant thing it really did for me, which which I could which a, a lot I wouldn't a lot of people I didn't really acknowledge at the time was it allowed me to understand that I could gain knowledge from other sources that, as as opposed to those around me. Mm -hmm. So immediately I read The Alchemist and I learned and I grew spiritually and mentally. I was like, what other books or what other knowledge can I acquire? So I, then I read. Rich Dad Poor Dad for the first time in my life. You know, then I read the Forty Eight Laws. Then I read um, the biography of um, a very successful entrepreneur, James Khan. You know, I, it's, it really started to to cultivate that mind state. And yeah. then I definitely knew that to grow as an artist, I needed to be a lot more entrepreneurial, and I need, and I need to start taking those steps as an entrepreneur. So then it ended up with me. At the time, I was working um, um, in a supermarket, yeah. and I was balancing between going to shows and having to um, make stuff, create poetry. At the time, I was just doing exclusively at shows. I was writing and performing at shows. And I was I was balancing that, working during the um, day, then going in the evening. And that was cool, but I wasn't gaining that much traction. And then I started reading a lot more of these books, and I, understand the con I began to understand the concept of residual income and how to make money when, when, you're not phys when you physically don't have to be there. So then I started to gear that towards my art. And then I, I felt YouTube as a platform made the most sense. If I exploited YouTube as a platform, I could make videos, and at the same time I could go to work, but I could still be generating revenue if if they took off, you know. Right. Then I started studying. Yeah. So Let then I started studying. For a sec, because I mean, like you're a really humble dude. I mean, you're not gonna you know brag about a lot of your accomplishments and what you've done, but you've got this YouTube channel. How many subscribers do you have in your channel? I think about two hundred and fifty thousand now. I think two hundred fifty thousand. And how many views have you had on some of these videos? I mean, maybe at the end, you know, do you think we can get you to do a little uh, spoken word performance for us, ad lib? I might, it, it might, it might be a bit too intense for the setting, you know. <laughs> I prefer people just watch it online. It's, it's a bit, it'll be a bit too intense. All right, you know what I'm gonna do then, guys? I'm gonna put a link to one of his videos uh, afterwards so you can check it out. But um, you had this, you had this mind shift where you wanted to create this new path. You wanted to perform. You wanted to do your spoken word. You read all these books. You took all this information from it. You obviously did. 
Did you have any other people that influenced you at the time that moved you in that direction to help you get to where you wanted to go? At, at the time when I initially started, no, I, I, I really didn't. I really didn't have a lot of um, role models because the environment I'm from is pretty much success is only understood in one in one context. So people didn't really understand what I was doing. So at the time, I didn't really have a lot of people to really push me. I was gaining all my knowledge from the books and the people around around me it, it, through those books and the texts. Um, on the subject of financial management, you know, we talked about this before. I hit the screen yeah. record button, but um, the thing that our clients um, and our audience at, at Total Debt Freedom struggle with is they get stuck on this merry-go-round of debt where they just go around and around in circles, they don't get very far, um, and they end up um, basically drowning in debt for the majority of their life, you know, treading water, just popping up and coming down. Um, I know you've made some fairly, you know, dramatic changes in your life. Um, you've been very, very successful in your own right. What sort of advice would you give to somebody that finds himself stuck somewhere? You know, your spoken word story is um, usually about, you know, the school institution says do this, that, and the other thing to get a job and, you know, fulfill other people's dreams. And you talked earlier on about doing a lot of things that were basically to make other people happy, but they weren't making you happy. What advice would you give to, to, to somebody that needed to make a fundamental change in their financial situation to get off the merry-go-round and go in the direction where they want to go, which is being debt-free, being able to put money aside, taking care of their children, leaving something behind for their kids? Um, I mean, the biggest transition I made um, in my financial thing, I guess it will stop to stop searching for security financially in the sense that stop um, going for the easiest option because sometimes you have to I feel sometimes you're never going to have enough to do what you want to do so you might as well go for it anyway and take the risk and, and invest in what you want to do at that time and there's times where, you, where you're going to lose money and it's not going to work out but I think when you settle for security you go for the um, you borrow money so, you, so, you, so you're secure in this space it's, it's, a false, it's a false illusion of security if you know what I mean yeah. I think sometimes you have to go for the risk and invest that money in, in, in those things which, which are more worthwhile and hopefully in the long term you're going to reap the benefits through, through, through that through that avenue as opposed to staying in a particular job just for security and getting that same salary round and round yeah. or relying on other people to supplement your income over and over again. Yeah, awesome. I think sometimes you have, to, you have to be not afraid of being broke to get to where you need to go if you know. Yeah, and you found yourself in a situation where you've basically given up everything just to pursue your passion and you probably found yourself broke I guess too, right? Yeah there, was, yeah, there was many times where, I mean, I worked lots of menial jobs in the meantime, but there was many times where I didn't have any money, and it was it was decision between, should I have money for the next three months' rent or invest some of that money in something that's going to uh, reap the rewards at a later date, you know? Yeah, yeah. And, I, and I've, always, I've always gone for the option rather than to trying to set myself, I, I don't think you can ever set yourself up 100% perfect, like, different circumstances can always come which will throw you out of the loop. Yeah. So I think rather than trying to set that scenario of security, you've just got... Um, Sometimes just try and go for it. Yeah, yeah, love it, man. It's you know, it's great advice. So, um, my my key takeaways just to recap, you know, talking now is obviously um, stop stop spending your time trying to make other people happy and focus on doing things that make you happy. Um, you know, you're also talking about your self development. Um, you know, for some people, mentors come in their life and they you know guide them along. For you, you found your own mentorship. I mean, um, I guess the moment when your mom didn't show up at your graduation going through the school system, doing what everybody told you to do to make them happy, you, you yeah. found this passion within yourself to say, look, you know, I got to do this because this is what I like to do, the spoken word poetry. So I'm going to go find things that motivate me and guide me in that path. So not only did you stop making other people happy, but you also invested in yourself at the yeah. cost of, you know, do you really need to buy all these things? Like, you know, there's a saying that people, people go to jobs to go and work for other people that they hate to buy things to impress people that they don't like either. Yeah. Right. I, I mean, you know, it's a common theme for a lot of people, and I've heard this from a lot of the other zero to hero stories that I've talked to as well. So, thanks yeah. very much, Suli, Mr. Briggs. I mean, on the, on the, I just want to touch on the subject of mentors as well, because I think mentors are yeah. very important. Now, I mean, I got to a certain stage by myself, but I've grown now exponentially because of the influence of mentors. If you know what I mean. Yeah, talk so, to me about that. We got time. Go. I just want to. I, 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 there's a few comp. Uh, there's a few um, entrepreneurs and guys who have started businesses who are really close mentors to me, and although. We, although they don't do art per se, they, they give me lots of guidance into the mentality. I think success is, is more mental. So they give me a lot of guidance into the mentality of being successful entrepreneurs. So I think those, if I didn't have those key figures around me right now, I definitely wouldn't be growing at the rate that I'm growing. Yeah, so that's, 
So that's really just surrounding yourself in an environment of, of, of people that are going to get you to where you want to go. You yeah. know, they say, you know, we've got mutual friends that say things like, um, you know, people that like, you're not going to get to where you want to go by surrounding yourself, you know, with the people that have gotten you to where you're at, really. You've got Definitely. to... You got to up your average. You know, you got to find these mentors. I mean, even even you yourself, I've I've probably added I think over a hundred videos now to two different YouTube channels that I have, and I've got to credit you and the gumption that you have, you know, within yourself to stand up and create these videos and do your po you know poetry and your spoken word. Because I thought to myself, this guy can do it. He's an artist. Why can't I talk about the message that I have on on TDF and various other channels? So I want to thank you for thank that. You. But oh, thank you. Man. Yeah, man. Like you've got to find these 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 people that are that are going to get you to where you want to go. If you surround yourself with those that you just constantly try to make happy, you're never going to be happy yourself, right? Yeah, I do All right, so that's Mr. Breaks. Um, where can people find you if they want to learn more about the stuff that you're doing? I guess the YouTube channel is the best best place. Yeah, YouTube YouTube is the best platform for all of that. I have a website, but YouTube's a little better. Cool. All right, so I'll throw an annotation in that with the information and put a link in the video. So. Thanks a lot for taking some time to chat with me, man. I really appreciate it, and I look forward to seeing you again soon, hopefully in Toronto or maybe the next event. Hopefully, man. Our next one's um, in Spain or something. Yeah, I'll see you at the next event anyway. Yeah, definitely. Thanks. Okay. Cheers.